Welcome to the end and the beginning where two massive bodies of water collide. Together, they encompass more than one million square miles. It's one of the biggest marine crossroads on Earth. And right smack in its heart, a humble marina that opens up to one of America's most generous fishing destinations. This is the Mississippi Delta. Man down, Come here, pretty mama. Yeah. If TV was making this art all the time, nobody would ever do it. That is a legitimate river monster. It is one of the largest migrations of bait on planet Earth. I think you've just done something the first time ever in the world. We may be at the end of Louisiana's Highway 23, but this story starts in southern Illinois and ends 700 miles south. Welcome to the Mississippi Delta, where the end of the Mississippi River meets the beginning of the Gulf of Mexico. It's a colossal brackish intersection fed by 90,000 miles of rivers and streams and 600,000 square miles of sea. Our home base is Venice Marina in Venice, Louisiana, a small town of oil company workers, shrimp boat operators, and fishing captains. It's located in the state's southeasternmost corner just this side of Mississippi. It's a location rich with game fish beyond measure. The redfish are insane. Years and years ago, when I was a kid, you know, we'd be out in West Delta and you would see a square mile of them. You know, I mean, you can't fathom how many fish it was. It would just be this acre, two acres of just bronze, red, anything you threw in the water. I mean, we, we jokingly would throw a beer can in the water and they'd eat that. We have tons and tons of fish and people laugh at the way we bull redfish. You know, a lot of times we'll just go look for some slicks or some bait and start casting and then you don't see any sign of a big fish, but they're there. Where there's bait and slicks and everything's right, big bull reds are lurking around somewhere. The collision of the freshwater river and salty gulf creates a brackish estuary where life thrives for inshore species like redfish and trout. The abundance of life here is a result of the mouth of the Mississippi River. You know, we have a tremendous amount of bait due to the mouth of the Mississippi River, you know. At the bottom of the food chain would be the Gulf Menhaden that exists primarily as at river basins, and we have the biggest river basin there is. At a cut in the Mississippi River, at a bifurcation, what we call Cuba's Gap, there's all kinds of fish that lurk along these rocks, and the river gets low like this, bass and speckled trout, white trout, drum. <laughs> Yoink. Louisiana speckled trout. We call them yellow mouths because of the yellow mouth. Sigh.
So we're off into the dark waters of the Delta, where our search for reds and gators brings us into contact with their latest generations. It's November in the Mississippi Delta, and that means fishing for redfish and trout in the estuary marshes, if the weather cooperates. So this time of year is traditionally my favorite time to fish. You know, I mean, this is the fall. You know, we get the cool fronts coming through. The bull reds get real active uh, in October, kind of beginning in November. Last week, we had days, highs in the 90s. I mean, 85, 90 degrees. Fishing was on fire. All of a sudden, Monday rolls around, we get a cold front, drops it down to the 50s, and completely changes the whole fishery. Everything starts moving into its winter pattern. The bull reds slow down. They're not as aggressive. They're not feeding as well. Kind of a big change. Typically, we'll get a warm day or two that'll get them back going, but we've, we've had like a week of cold weather now, and it's really affected the fishing. The scale of water and life is hard to comprehend. In Venice, the run to the fishing spot can be anywhere from half a mile from the dock to 40 miles away. The common tool of the trade is the popping cork, a float with a concave cup on one end. Chugging the popping cork through the water creates a pop and a splash, which is meant to simulate surface feeding or baits fleeing from predators. This commotion allows the fish to find the bait or lure in spite of the water's low visibility. Well, we are hidden from the wind, which is still blowing. We're trying a little inside fishing this morning, looking for some smaller reds. In this cold water, they kind of tend to stack in these little passes. You didn't find you a bull, did you? No, nah, a baby bull. Oh, look at that blue tail. Pretty. Nice work, Bone. I think he's right up in the slot. Seems like a healthy fish right here. Tell you what, a little workout pulling these reds out of 30 foot of water straight down with 20 knots of current. <clears throat> tough mouths, the old tough mouth redfish. That's actually perfect size, 24 inches, 23 inches. We're sitting right here, what we call behind the house. If you notice over my right shoulder is the house. We're literally at the marina catching uh, a lot of medium-sized reds, and all of a sudden this big bull showed up. We're gonna let this big mama go. Usually these ones are big females. Oh! And she's got plenty of energy. Off she goes. Behind the house. That's what I like. On the schedule for tomorrow, bad weather and big fish.
What turns you off? For me, it's anglers with heavy feet on a skiff. Or a man who can't carve his own bow. For fish, it's a good old-fashioned coal front. We're doing this for the duck hunters in the world, because they're all getting wind and having good duck hunting conditions. If we weren't doing this, it'd be flat calm, fish would be biting, and the duck hunters would be sweating, getting eaten by bugs. I guess we're kind of off the charts. The weather conditions, the sea conditions go, we could kind of explore both sides of the river. And then we had our first real cold front of the year, which brought some winds from the north and kind of chopped up all the bays that we've been fishing these big fish in. And as things start to cool off in the delta, fish start to kind of disperse a little differently into deeper water and the big ones kind of spread out. And uh, they're not in the schools that they were in following the bait that they were following. The glimpse of a spotted tail the arch of a copper shoulder. There it is, there it is, bone! Sight fishing for reds is a fan favorite, but here in the Delta, even blind casting works. You may not see a fish, but you'll see signs of a fish. Most days we go out bull red fishing and we're seeing pelicans dive and we're seeing fish blowing up, you know, swirling, kicking mud, cartwheeling, doing whatever they're doing. But a lot of times we'll go back to the same area the next day and you won't see any sign but yet the fish are still there and we just can blind cast and catch them consistently, which is the beauty of Venice. Big red fish. One thing about red fishing, you can keep popping the cork, keep popping the cork. I really think that might've been like 110th cast, freezing cold, warming up, but that's what we come for, man. Nice, big, beautiful red fish. Definitely uh, still got a little horsepower on him. My man. I like that back spot. That's really kind of cool and unique. Louisiana redfish, 150 casts. We got a lot more casting to do. Nice work. Hey, Dave. Nice work, Bone. Nice work. Thank you, Cap. Thank you. Just like we're in Alaska, the water's cold, the wind is blowing, they're a little sluggish, but they're in here. You start off coming off your cup of coffee, feeling good. 100 pops of cast, 500 cast later. Thank you, sir. Louisiana redfish. Playing hard to get today, I gotta tell you. Playing real hard to get. Well, you've got a real pretty spot. Circle spot, donut on the tail. A little lower one. You can feel him. He's just, he's in this colder water, kind of sluggish. But they're here. tough days on the water, grinding out the wind and chill, the sun decides to shine down on us for our final day. And just in time, because we don't have a lot of show left.
During Louisiana's winters, reds move from deep water in the morning into the shallows in the afternoon, often in large numbers. At this point in the year, their spawn is done, so now it's time for a well-deserved feeding frenzy. With redfish, their diet and habitat impact their coloration. The redfish, you know, they're almost like chameleons. They change colors, and depending on what they're eating, they kind of have a different appearance. When they're in dirty water, they look different from when they're in crystal clear water. And the big amber ones, they're just bronze color, beautiful throughout the whole fish. And we caught some in the river system, and they have the bluish metallic tails, and they're a darker color. And I think a lot of it is what they're eating. You know, they say when they're out eating the shrimp in the sand, they get that bronze color. But they really can be beautiful fish with many different colors and color phases almost. Have to take the leash off. Did you see him? No. Nice work. I didn't. That was all the blind cast for sure. But you got a bowling? She's a pumpkin. Is it a pumpkin? Yeah, it's a pumpkin red. Pumpkin red head. Wow. We've been floating around in essentially shallow golf again, but on the east side in this bay, we've been looking at redfish. They've been harassing all these baits and the water's kind of dirty. Seeing a couple roll around here and there, but it's starting to become a productive day. Beautiful. Very good, very good. They're such a fun fish. See, it's funny. Some guys, older guys down here, a lot of times, are going, yeah, bull reds. But to me, it's a fish I grew up with and, you know, great sport fish. They're just, they're, they're fun to watch. They pull hard. For an angler, it's a great fish. Man down, son! Oh, that's your fish that I was casting at, and I'm on you. I understand. You want to play defense? Nice, cat. Somebody had a pretty good eye on that fish, Bone. The redfish is so great. You know, we catch them pretty much anyway. Some guys just use none of a dead shrimp. Some guys use live shrimp. But the fishery really likes artificial. You can cover more ground. You don't have to always get the bait. Really, the artificial bait fishing down here can be really good, especially when there's water. Fish are in clearer water and moving around and been very effective. Son! Stay right there, cat. Redfish from the top. <laughs> we finally got us a good one. So bronze out here in this pretty water. We know uh, we know there are a lot out here. We've seen them. We finally got a, a good bite. God, is that thing pretty, huh? Colors are so different. Pretty mama. It only takes one redfish in a trip to kind of make a memory. You know, thinking back, there's so many days whenever, you know, trout fishing or something like that, you catch a big bull red, and that's like such a pivotal point of the day. There it is, bull red. So come on down to the little marina that fronts one of the biggest river deltas on Earth where life abounds in this rare brackish stew. Ask for Osprey charters. They'll leave the running lights on for you.